Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Today I'm uh, still working on that mini loop, playing around with it. Um, its final physical configuration allows it to be tunable from 14 megahertz to about 28.3, which gives me the most bands in one physical configuration. But I really wanted to get it back down to 40. Um, when I first had it wound with six turns of wire on the outer loop, it was a uh, it was tunable from 60 meters up through 40 meters, and I actually made contacts on 40, and that was intriguing to me. The SWR wasn't the greatest; I could only get it down to about 1.8 to 1, 2 to 1, but it did work on 40. I was able to make contacts. Um, I didn't want to rewind the loop with six turns or you know do anything chunky like that so I thought I'll just try to increase capacitance digging around in the junk box I found this uh, 130 picofarad 3 kilovolt does that say 6? that says 6, 6 kilovolt capacitor so plenty of voltage um, capability for a magnetic loop 130 picofarad the variable cap on the loop is 8 to, to 40, or 8 to 30, 8 to 40. I think it's 8 to 40 or 8 to 50. It's around in there. Um, so I, uh, as an experiment, clipped this on to increase the uh, capacitor's um, uh, increase the capacitor. And it made the, uh, made the tunable range from somewhere just below 6 megahertz up to 7.078 so it just got me into the digital and CW lower end of uh, 40 meters and I played around with it and I made a contact on JC, JT65 uh, midday today two and a half watts um, 383 miles out to the western edge of Illinois uh, so <laughs> that uh, that was fun you know it, it uh, tuned up on 40 and uh, the SWR was a lot better. Uh, I could get it right down to one to one. Uh, a disc ceramic capacitor is known for one thing. Uh, it's known for drifting with temperature changes, and I mean the slightest. You can breathe on one of these if you use this in, a, in an oscillator and watch the frequency change just from the slight temperature change. And uh, I saw that with long transmit sessions when transmitting JT65 or a long PSK transmission, especially at 5 watts, um, the loop's tuning would start to drift within about 10 seconds. And what it was was this capacitor very, very slightly warming under the load, under the voltage load. You couldn't feel the temperature difference, but you would transmit and that loop's tuning would shift slowly. And then you'd let off and then over the following 20 30 seconds you could hear the receive static come up as the sh as the tuning shifted back as this cooled back down so this is interesting as an experiment but not stable enough for uh digital modes it would be fine for doing cw at the bottom end of the band cuz it's such a shallow duty cycle once you tune the loop it would be fine it would stay tuned uh during cw work probably during sideband but 7.078's the max i i would actually need uh, a capacitor about 115 picofarads I think or 100 picofarads to get it up to where the loop tunes across the 40 meter band so uh, my thought was I've got this I've got this big trimmer that's about 300 picofarads and uh, you can open up the plate gap on that pretty good so I'm gonna modify it I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to remove a couple of plates and measure it and maybe remove another plate and measure it and I'm going to get this guy down to about 110 or so picofarads. Alright, this is what the inside of the capacitor looks like. It's a plate stack. Each of the plates are all connected down here and there's mica insulators between them. And there's two sets. There's a set of plates here and a set of plates here, and they alternate. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess the way to modify this is going to be simply bend out one of these plates, 
save that mica insulator and if I bend this out and work it back and forth a few times it'll break off and I'll have to do two at a time I'll have to count the plates how many are there because they're like this All right. so I'll count the plates figure out how many there are and the capacitance is 300 picofarads so then it'll just be a little bit of division to figure out how many plates I need to remove to get this thing down to where its value centers around 100 which would be uh, two-thirds of the plates right so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna count how many sets of plates there are and then uh, remove two-thirds of the plates and then we'll measure we'll put it back together and measure it and I'm gonna save the mic insulators and I'm gonna stack those in between the remaining plates to increase the insulation because we do have to be careful at the minimum gap which is going to be right in here is where we'd have a potential for arcing when the uh, loop is transmitting because we're going to have you know, one, 1 to 1 1.2 or 1.3 kilovolts across this thing um, during transmit uh, up to about 10 watts 5 watts probably right around a kilovolt or 900 volts so it's going to be important to keep uh, as much of a gap as possible down here so we don't arc inside the cap all right, so I removed four plates. There were uh, nine total. And uh, I put it all back together and I put the extra mic insulators between the remaining plates to increase the insulation gap. So now I've got the cap over on the uh, old uh, RLC bridge. We'll go there next and I'll show you how we measure it. Okay, my apologies for the poor lighting. A bit of a shadow there, but you can see the meter that's the important part. So the way an RLC bridge works is it is a inductive resistance and capacitive bridge with known calibrated values internally and you substitute in an inductor, a capacitor, or a resistor um, and once you've substituted that that part in that you don't know you tune until you find the resonant frequency and then the other two values are known so the dial is calibrated to what the calculated uh, value of the unknown would be at resonance and then you can read off the dial what your uh, what your value is so I've got it on capacitive capacitance times one picofarad which is the outer scale on the uh, dial and uh, if I tune this you'll see the meter go up what you're looking for is you're looking for that dip that dip is resonance so right about there is resonant and that would be 75 picofarads so now I've brought the low end of the range down to 75 picofarads I'll take my uh, trimmer on here we'll turn it in half a turn the meter went up and now we'll tune for the peak the dip again and right about there and that is um, 90, 90 picofarads. So this is looking good. Remember, I wanted a range from about uh, 70 up to about 120. We'll tune it up another half a turn. And now we'll look for that dip again. Right about there. And that's 100 picofarads. Turn it another half a turn. And the dip is right there. And that is 130. So good. Within the turn and a half, I've got my range. So if I come back out. And a half turns, I should be around 70 picofarads again. Find that dip right there. Eh, 80. That's a good starting point. So it worked. I've modified this cap to give me a 
tunable range. Hopefully the plate gap is adequate to handle the voltages during transmit. I'll know pretty quick because it'll arc if it's not. <laughs> so uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, solder a couple of alligator clips on that uh, trimmer and then we'll take it upstairs, clip it on the loop and see how it behaves.